Hey guys, it's Whiskey. Welcome to Palm Tree Elegy. Today's video is all about cake. Um, I'm actually using a, a letter from Emily Dickinson, one of her printed letters, to open up into this. And then I have a really cool story and, and actually an action plan after this. So let's carry on with cake. Everybody loves cake, right? Emily Dickinson was born December of 1830 in Massachusetts. She's a, an American poet. Only 10 of her 1800 poems are originally published and she didn't want any of her works published. When she died, she wanted her sister to destroy everything. And thank God for our humanities and our literature history, liter literary history that they didn't listen to her. Um, she died at the age of 55 of Bright's disease, which is actually kidney disease. Um, and she was very, very recluse there's they don't know if there was trauma in her former life or her former public life um some people have actually suggested that possibly she was gay and that's why she hid from society because back in the 1800s that was not heard of and was not allowed and women were not even heterosexual women were not necessarily put in a good light to be on their own or anything like that so for about 30 years, she stayed in her house and a good portion of the older years, those older times, she didn't even come out of her bedroom, but she did love to bake. She loved to cook and she would drop, either drop her treats out the window in a basket to the little kids down the street that would sit there and wait for the treats, or she would send parcels and care packages to her friends and neighbors along with letters of just the way she loved she loved the energy behind baking and cooking and sharing it out into the rest of the world, even though she didn't go out. And this is one of those letters. I have got a nice cake of, sh of sugar to send you by Mr. Green, and she'll put some big sound apples if there is any room. Thank you, dear, for the quickness, which is the blossom of request, and for the definiteness for a new rule recipe is a chance. The bread resulted charmingly and such pretty little proportions, quaint as a druggist formula. With it, I enclose love's remainder biscuit, somewhat scorched perhaps in baking, but love's oven is warm. I send you a taste of, I send you a taste, Jenny, of E. Kellogg's wedding cake. You remember her, don't you? Eat it tearfully, Jenny, for it came all the way from me. Thank you. You thank me for the rice cake. You tell me, Susie, you have just been tasting it and how happy I am to send you anything you love. Letters excerpted from Letters of Emily Dickinson, Dickinson through Harvard University Press. And I actually went and deliberately chose a poem about cake or a letter about cake for a reason. I went on a vacation with my husband to California last March, and I've been kind of soul searching and energy searching and, and trying to figure out the world, right? Who I think a lot of people, once they get to like their 40s and 50s or midlife, as they call it, we have different perspectives and we try to search things out a little more. And nowadays, I think people are coming into it a little younger because of all the communication and technology we have. But... On the way back from that trip, I had already started doing kind of some social energy experiments, I guess you'd say, while we were in California. And when we crossed over into Arizona, there's this little greasy spoon hole in the wall restaurant that my husband always frequented when he was on the road. He drove truck for 33 years. And we stopped at that restaurant on the way to California and we stopped at that restaurant on the way back. And on the way back, they have those old fashioned the old glass cases that spin around that have dessert to, to get you hooked right when you walk in the door, right? And right there glaring back at me was this big, beautiful piece of chocolate cake. And I was like, okay, I want to try something. So when we ordered our lunch, I asked the waitress to bring me, plate me one bite of that chocolate cake, one bite. And to wrap the rest of it onto a separate plate and gift it to whoever she thought 
needed it the rest of that day. If it was her, if it was a, anybody in the kitchen, if it was a customer, it didn't matter. My only rules were bring me back one bite of that cake. And I wanted to see what happened, right? Well, number one, I realized the reason I'm only doing one bite is because I realized the best bite of any dessert, no matter how good it is, is the first bite. After that, it's just pure gluttony and we're, we're stuffing in dessert that we don't necessarily, we're not enjoying it anymore and we don't need the extra calories. And then we feel guilty after the fact, right? So now I just take one bite of cake or one bite of dessert and that's it. So I give her my request and she's so tickled to go try and, and, you know, meet this odd request from this lady. And she actually brought me back two plates and they each had half a piece of cake on them, not one bite. So I was like, okay, cool, whatever. I was, this is my experiment, right? I wanted to see what happened. So she's like, well, I decided that I want the other part of the cake and I just, I couldn't take half. I, I, I could only take this part. So I gave you the rest back and I'm like, oh, okay, thank you. And then she proceeded to tell me how she was supposed to go out with her girlfriends tonight and hang out, but now she don't think she can because she can't enjoy the evening tonight and the food she wanted to eat because she's about to eat the half a piece of cake I just gave her. So I was like, okay, her choice, right? And I didn't make any rules on where she could, what she could and couldn't eat or, or what she could do here. So I take half a piece of cake, which my husband's tickled at this point because he's going to eat the rest of this cake because I'm only eating one bite. And we have our lunch. We just sit there and wait and talk and everything else. She comes back about um, three quarters of the way through lunch and announces that she had take, she was walking through the kitchen with that half a piece of cake. And the dishwasher looked up at her and said, what's that from? Or what's that for? And she said that the look on his face when she said it was just a freebie from a customer that had sent it back to the kitchen, she said the look on his face was so ecstatic that she didn't even think about it and she just handed him the cake. So that half a piece of cake, she never took a bite out of it. She ended up handing it to the dishwasher. And then... She came back so excited to tell me how she had shared that half a piece of cake with the dishwasher. And then by the time we were done with dinner or lunch, she said that she had actually sold seven pieces of cake of that chocolate cake. She sold the entire chocolate cake while we were still in the restaurant. And I was amazed. I'm like, that is so cool, right? Because I didn't say it out loud. I didn't say it to anybody else. And I don't. She didn't say she said she hadn't. I don't know if she hadn't. It didn't matter if she did or not. But then she comes back with the comment of now I'm going to have to break it to the baker, the lady who bakes the cakes for this restaurant, that she's going to have to make another cake. And she said it in such a way that it was a bad thing. And I was like, oh, well, OK, good, good for her. She gets to make another cake. So. We've been sitting, we're sitting here watching this exchange over this cake this whole time. And it dawned on me that if she would have accepted the gift, because she took the gift of the cake on her for herself, which was perfectly fine. But if she would have accepted the whole gift and left, brought me back one piece of, one bite of cake and took the whole rest of the piece of cake for herself she would have been able to share a whole piece of cake with the dishwasher or she could have taken as much as she had taken for herself and still gifted a half a piece of cake to the dishwasher. And the moral of that story is when gifts are given to us and energy is exchanged to us, and those things come towards us, it, how we feel about ourselves directly affects how we perceive it and what we do with the gift we were given. Because she didn't perceive herself as worthy enough of A, to take the whole piece, and B, to enjoy her evening with her friends that afternoon, 
and accept the whole piece. She shortchanged herself and she shortchanged the dishwasher who ultimately got the piece of cake. But because of her energy and excitement about the entire experiment even happening, seven more people that day enjoyed a piece of that cake. So, and I, it's been this now July, I started doing that in March. And to this day, every time I go to a restaurant, the, this last restaurant I went to, the server took it back. She, she put the order in with the kitchen. Someone else delivered me the dessert and it wasn't separated at all. And my son was with me. He's like, mom, it's board of health. It's all these issues. You can't do this stuff or she can't take that cake. And I said, just wait, let's see what happens. I'm not going to tell somebody what rules they can, what rules they can't. So I took my clean spoon. I took off one bite off of that dessert. And I pushed it over to the other side of the table and I waited for her to come back. And I said, just wanted to let you know, this is all I did with this because this is what I ordered. And this is not how this happened. You know, can you please just go ahead and take the cake back? Do what you, what you will with it. I'm not going to eat the rest of this cake. And she was completely ecstatic. And she goes, oh no, she goes, this piece of, this piece of dessert is going to go back to the kitchen and everybody's going to grab a spoon and the entire kitchen is going to enjoy this dessert. And I was like, ta-da, there you go. And the second part to that is it's also an upsell for the server. So I get to share the love and share the energy of one piece of cake everywhere I go. And she makes more money off of it too. So I challenge you, where or how could you share just one thing like that? Even if it's, even if it's doing this exact same thing in restaurants taking one piece of cake, one bite, and sharing the love and the energy with somebody else and see what an impact you can make on somebody's day for something so simple as a piece of cake. I love y'all. This one today, I get to eat it all because, well, I'm by myself today, but <sighs> I love y'all. Have a great day and keep on rocking. Hi again. The two bites of cheesecake I just had were phenomenal. I can't eat that whole piece anymore, so I'll wrap it up and give it to somebody later. Anyway, I forgot to add in the first portion of this video is I'm actually having business cards designed and printed right now to help facilitate the communication between myself, the server, and the kitchen to keep doing this because I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. I get to enjoy dessert everywhere, and I'm actually losing weight too, so it's been great. But I'm having those cards designed and I'd like to sell them to help support seed money for my company and to help other people share the love and share the experience. So unlimited amount, let me know how many you want. They're a dollar a card for easy math that in includes shipping and just email me at palmtreeelegy at gmail.com and put cake in the comment in the subject line. So I will be able to pick it out right away and I will get right back to you. And I will also put my email and the directions in the comments. So thank you so much. I love y'all again, and we'll talk to you later. Keep on rocking.